when we relax, um, we we relax out of a mode of being whereby we are habitually acting and speaking based on hope and fear. And um, when we're relaxed out of that, there's a whole different world. <laughs> and uh, we can see that in our own experience when we try it. For example, when we're speaking with other people, or speaking with family, we may sometimes notice that the way that we're relating with them is, is just habitual. It's based on, to one, to one degree or another, based on hope and fear. And we, in that moment, we, we can relax, and, and there's a whole different world in front of us in that moment. Because we have all of the possibility, we're not... Um, we're not in the prison of needing to react to our own thoughts and emotions. <laughs> we can allow all of our own thoughts and emotions to flow on by. And uh, so one thing that I was always really interested in, and I think everybody's the same really, is um, uh, I was always disappointed and disheartened when I saw uh, in my groups of friends or family or whatever, whereby I could see that the, the common unsaid understanding was that um, people deserve love only under certain conditions. So if, if somebody accords with the mutual agreement of the group's value system, <laughs> then they are loved. If they don't, then they're not loved, possibly even ridiculed and attacked. And um, this creates a pressure in each individual that their thoughts and emotions should accord with the group's value system <laughs> in order that they're welcome and accepted. And so one way that this sometimes plays out, for example, is to mutually dislike another person. <laughs> And if we all, uh, uh, if, if all of the people agree to that, and even if they don't really pretend to, then they're included in the group, and they're allowed to be in the group, and they're accepted, and they're safe. Um, and the threat is that if you don't join in, <laughs> you might be the person that's been, been being ridiculed. And um, so there's all kinds of subtle ways that this kind of relating plays out. And um, in, in many ways, that are, um, not all of them are, you know, like, um, many ways that are more innocent than the one that I just described. But, but the, the, the result is the same, that there isn't quite the ability in each person without having been trained to be comfortable in their own skin. <laughs> and so, uh, when I came to this training and I heard words like what Candice said in, in this video, that human beings are wired and fully equipped to be of benefit, and that's what all of their appearances are, that's what's coursing through our veins coursing through our minds in every moment. It's the, the potency of benefit when it's allowed to be as it is. Uh, it really clicked with me <laughs> because I could see this is, this is the answer for unconditional love. You know, whereby we can be with each other and we can be with our family and friends without any kind of um, conflict with ourselves. Totally honouring every single appearance that appears in our mind. Honouring it by not warring against it. <laughs> And so it, it's helpful to 
uh, well, I said that my understanding of the teaching is whenever I'm, I remember, I relax. And um, an extension of that <laughs> is to relax and stop describing. Um, so when we, because usually we feel like there's, there's, a, there's a timeline and then along the timeline there's a spectrum of human experience and at any one point we're having one of them. <laughs> 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 and, and they all have different descriptions. There's, there's bubbly, there's sad, there's annoyed, there's, and we're always in one of those descriptions. But only if we describe. <laughs> Only if we um, decide that that's the case. Oh, now I am in this one. Now I'm on this part of the spectrum. And I'll just kind of ride it out until I move to another one. <laughs> um, and and uh, But, but in, in, in this community and with the support of your trainer, you can start to see that even those, what, even the parts of the spectrum that you feel are not, this, you, your feeling is they're somehow below the par of, of what you want to be your standard of personality. Um, so you just kind of don't want those bits, <laughs> you know. And you, uh, you know, you can, you can learn over time to kind of endure those parts of yourself. I think that's what I spend a lot of my time doing. I'll just endure the, my, these parts of myself that aren't, the, the, you know, when I'm not on form. I'm not on form when I'm in these emotions. Um, but when I, when I started to relax and stop describing, I could see that things weren't as defined as I thought they were. And um, that, uh, you know, for example, something that I was always afraid of was grumpiness, being grum me being grumpy. I didn't mind if other people were grumpy particularly, but it was below my standards. Um, you know, so there's a bit of arrogance thrown in there as well somewhere. <coughs> um, so grumpiness in myself, I kind of, Th that wasn't acceptable to me. <laughs> um, and so that is that same dynamic that I explained earlier. That is the conditional love. I, am a, I will love myself under certain conditions when I'm in certain areas of this spectrum. <laughs> when I'm in certain other areas, I, I'm unacceptable. And the very best I will give myself is to endure myself. <laughs> um, so that's, uh, that's aggressive. That's an aggressive relationship with ourselves. It's a relationship with ourselves that lacks understanding, that lacks openness to seeing things openly, not through the labels and descriptions that we've learned. And, um, yeah, just like Candice was saying about that the, there, there was a tsunami where she was on the day that she gave this talk and the, the swells in the ocean. She lives next to the ocean. And that these swells, they exist in all natural systems. <laughs> And no other natural system other than a human being feels any conflict with it. <laughs> feels any need to control it, adapt it, modify it. And so grumpiness, whenever it came up in me, I felt like I needed to correct it or replace it with um, a more happy state or something that's uh, more acceptable to me. But what I found in letting it be as it was is that there's something so real about it, something so 
when it's undescribed. When it's indulged, then it's just ridiculous. <laughs> you know, or when the reasons and the person whose fault it is and everything is indulged, then you've lost your way. <laughs> um, but when it's just allowed to be as it is, then there's a real potency there. And... Um, a real honouring of yourself, a real respect of yourself, and therefore everybody else. And the, the intelligence of nature that every moment is arising within and as us. And it's, it's not very easy to uh, package why our disturbing states are beneficial. But when we, when we rely on open intelligence to the best of our ability for short moments, gradually we find that that's the case. And um, it's, it's really is a new, it really is a new life. You know, it's something that we're not used to. Um, that these dark states or... whatever we might call them, that they are so powerful and they are uh, so valuable and they exist only as benefit. So sometimes a certain set of thoughts and emotions seem like a special set that we're somehow not allowed to have or that means that something's wrong or something like that. But actually every set of experience is the same opportunity to rely on open intelligence. And so the, the direction here is to become comfortable with everything you're experiencing in, not to replace it with something that you think is more suitable or more appropriate, but to have every most inappropriate or wrong thing you can imagine that's naturally happening and to feel totally comfortable. <laughs> And in that, you will know why this teaching is so valuable. 